So when we model this data in the correct way, we're going to, or, or a better way than a linear model, we're going to use a generalized linear model, GLM, with the binomial family. Um, so uh, family equals binomial we'll use. That's because um, this data is binomial in nature. So it's that um, success failure type data, tossing a coin to the kind of heads or tails type of data. And so the binomial function. Just before we get on to that, I just want to tell you that um, there were data points hidden behind other data points in that plot. I looked to see how many data points in total in the data set, and it's, and it's 63. So you could see that as well. Um, and um, I also looked, and there are 21 per product, so 3 times 21. And, and um, so the data set does have a value for every combination of log dose and product. And that means that there are data points hidden behind each other. It's not because there are missing data in there. So to make that a better graph, a better visualization, we'd need to jitter the points a little bit so they're not hidden behind each other. And of course, when we do that kind of jittering, we must state that we've done it in the report that we make in the legend of the plot. So getting on to the uh, binomial family, uh, we'll just have a quick recap of the binomial distribution. Um, something that we can do in R that's quite nice is create, uh, simulate, um, tossing a coin. Um, so we could simulate tossing a coin, a fair coin, ten times. Uh, let's just do that. I'll show you how we can do that. So we use a function called R binome. The first is the kind of number of trial, uh, number of number of times we do the ten coin coin tosses. So we'll just do it, we'll just do one lot of ten, 10 coin tosses. That's the 10 coin tosses. And this saying it's a fair coin, it's just as likely to come up one way or the other. So we run that and we get seven, seven heads. We can run it again. Six, seven, five, six, five, and so on and so on and so on and so on. Can you ever get one? Very unlikely that only one comes up heads. No, not yet. No, anyway, I'm not going to continue doing that. <clears throat> now, if we increase this number, so we make this number 10, this is like tossing a coin 10 times, doing that 10 times over. So we can run that line, and there we see, oh, we got a 9 there, which is equivalent of a 1. Um, so here we can see the results of those 10 lots of 10 trials, if you like. If we change this number, to 0.1, Oops. then we get a much lower number of heads, if you like, that's what I'm saying, coming up. So that's a kind of binomial distribution. We can also kind of go backwards in a way with this, with a different function, d binomial. We give this three things. Um, we can give it the number of heads that we observed. Let's say we, we tossed a coin 100 times, and we observed 50, 50 times it came up heads. Um, then we give it the number of times we tossed the coin, say 100. Then we give the whether the coin is fair or not, the probability of it coming up heads. And that will now give us the probability of observing 50 heads when we toss a coin a hundred times, a fair coin a hundred times. So it's actually, it's about, it's about 0.08. Doesn't seem like a very high probability. Um, it's actually, obviously, it's, it's the highest, it's the most probable outcome is getting 50 heads, but it's still not that probable um, because there's a lot of other things that could happen, like 49, for example. The probability of 49 is only just a tiny bit less than the probability of 50. Um, anyway, so we can we can play with the, the binomial distribution and um, in R to get a, a reasonable understanding of, of what it's doing. And what we what we're doing in um, in a, in a binomial family GLM is well we know this we know the number of successes we know the number of trials and essentially we're trying to guess or estimate that probability. 
That's what's going on here. The, prob the estimation of the probabilities. Now the other bit, when we do the GLM and say family equals binomial, the other thing that happens automatically is that it that R chooses the appropriate link function or an appropriate link function. And the default link function for a binomial model, as you know from the lecture, is the logit link function. And so it's worth just having a look graphically. I made a graph earlier that shows uh, the behavior of this link function. I think you've seen this already in the lecture. And so this is the, um, the, the probability that we can easily uh, calculate, like a 0.5 probability here, say the probability of coming up heads or tails of a coin. When we, when we transform that, when we logic transform that, we go up here and across, we get zero. So the logit of 0.5 is zero. So that's the middle of the, the new scale that we're creating here, the linear predictor scale. And if we go down to probability of zero, then the logit of zero is actually minus infinity. It goes all the way down, down and down and down forever. And up here, the logit of one goes all, all the way up here all the way up to um, infinity, plus infinity. And so what we've done is essentially taken a bounded variable, it's bounded between zero and one, and transformed it into an unbounded variable, it goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. That's what the logit is doing. Um, and then we can use a linear, and that's the linear predictor scale. So if we see a logit of zero, you know, that's kind of point, point 0.5 um, probability. So that's a logit link function. We can, in this, in this library here, which I load boot, it's got a function called logit. So if we put in 0.5, oops, we get zero we saw on that graph, if we put in logit of zero, probability, what's the logit of probability zero? Minus infinity. Logit of one plus infinity. Good, so that's the logit. And that's the binomial family and the logit link function. Now let's make the GLM. Let's do finally what we should have done long ago, make the GLM. Now there's something a little bit special we have to do that's different in this case uh, from the Poisson GLM or the previous linear models that we've made. That's we have to give the, the data, the response variable data, there's kind of two columns the column of successes and the column of failures. And we need to bind those two columns together so it's just one thing. We use C bind there, column bind, successes, failures. Now remember, they are what we created just here. <clears throat> we created those from the data. The number of successes, which is the number of dead, and the number of failures, uh, which is, well, the num total number of trials minus the number of dead. Successes and failures. And log dose is one of the explanatory variables and product is the other. Now, we have to decide whether we're going to put a plus or a times in here. Because we want to ask whether the slopes are different, we want to allow this model to have different slopes, we want it to have this interaction term, we put a times. If we'd put a plus, it would have constrained the model to have the same slope for every product. The data set is DD, and finally, family equals binomial. Looks like it's worked. The next thing that we do, 
of course, is the diagnostic plots. Okay, so there's if this didn't have a blue line on, I'd argue that we wouldn't really make much of this. It's just a scatter of points. The same here. There's a bit of a deviation for the normal QQ plot. There's not much going on in the residuals versus leverage. So I'm relatively happy with the residuals of this model, conforming to the assumptions of the model. So we can continue with interpretation of the model. The very first thing we can do is just check whether this interaction term is significant or not. We want to look at that interaction term itself. And we do that by doing a, um, it's kind of like an ANOVA table, analysis of variance table, but it's actually an analysis of deviance table because this is a GLM, and GLMs result in deviance. So we use ANOVA M1. We also need to say chi.test. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. Test equals chi squared. We use a chi squared test for binomial model, just like we did for the Poisson model. Run that. So it's an analysis of deviance table. It's very helpfully telling us that. The model is binomial. Uh, and the link is logit, so it's just telling us what it's done. The response was C-bind successes and failures. It says terms added sequentially, first to last. So it's added log dose first. So reading this, we see the first line is a model without anything, or just a model with, with an intercept. And there we have uh, 541.46 um, residual deviance, the unexplained deviance. Now, when we add, uh, when I was added log dose to the model, the deviance is reduced by 476-ish units. That's a massive reduction in deviance in what's left unexplained. Here is what is left unexplained. It's, it's, it's not that much. So 65.55 here plus 475.91 equals 541.46. Then when product is added to the model, <clears throat> there's only a very small decrease in the deviance um, that's unexplained. I, there's very little deviance explained by product. And so we see this number, what's left unexplained, reduced only by a little bit. Uh, and there, there's no significant um, increase in, in what's been explained. Now, this is the interaction term. This is allowing the lines to have different slopes. We see a reduction in the unexplained deviance of 9.19 units. And this is what we get down to. And this is significant at 0.05. It's not massively significant, but it is um, at 0.05. So it's moderately significant. Good, and 57 degrees of freedom, which is what we guessed, or what we worked out. It wasn't a guess. We knew that it was going to be correct. Didn't we? So 57 degrees of freedom for the model with the interaction terms. Brilliant. So we've actually got a significant result there. You remember when we did the linear model, we did the linear model, we didn't get a significant um, interaction term. So uh, sometimes that, that happens. Good. So what's the biological interpretation of what's going on here? Let's just plot this um, graph again without the, without the smoothed lines. There we go. Now let's scoot down as well. Let's get a summary table. Help, help that tell us what the interactions actually might be. B. Okay, here's the intercept. That's for 
that's for product A, so this comes alphabetically. This here is the log dose, that's the continuous explanatory variable. And um, it's the this is the slope here for product A. Here's the intercept for product, oh sorry, here is the difference. This is dif the difference between the intercept for product B and product A. This is the difference in the intercept for product C and product A. So the only thing that's significant there is the log dose effect for um, product A. <clears throat> and then this here is the difference between the slope of product A and product B. And that difference is negative. So product B has a lower slope than product A. And that is just significant, moderately significant. You can see that. Um, and then product C, this is, the, this is the difference between the slope for product C and the slope for product A. You can see that that's, that's relatively small, especially compared to this difference. So we can, can say with reasonable confidence that the slope of product A is not different from the slope of product B. Now let's look at the graph and see, see whether that matches with what um, you might have guessed. As you remember, I couldn't make a guess because I already knew the answer. So B, he said, looking at this summary table, B has a lower slope, this shallower slope, than either A or C. So, I don't know, you, maybe, maybe you imagined that these, the, there were some these green data points here, and these green data points here were a bit lower here and a bit higher here which would mean that the line that was fitted through there for green would be shallower than the line that was fitted for blue and red, A and C. If you did, then you correctly interpreted that um, and have identified that there would be a significant interaction and the nature of that interaction would be that um, the effect of log dose is weaker for product A than for product A or C. <clears throat> it's not massively clear from this from this graph. Okay, that is about it for the for the model. I think we'll stop there with that interpretation. The next thing to do is to make a beautiful graph, and I think we'll leave that just for the last video. So see you in that video.